Good day, Mr. Rosser here with your 3DS Max tutorial. Today we're going to be using splines. What are splines, you're wondering? Well, splines are the most basic element in designs and creating objects. They're two-dimensional objects or lines that can be converted into three-dimensional if you want to create even more elaborate objects. For today, we're going to be keeping them in their two-dimensional form. So what we want to do today is we want to create an object that looks like this. We want to create a rectangle that's basically a, uh, an out-of-shape cube that has a rectangle above a rectangle connected by lines. So what we're going to do is, from this screen, most of you know I prefer the full screen mode. If you prefer working in this format, that's fine, where you can see all sides at once. I prefer a larger screen so I can see my work better. So I'm going to go down to the bottom right here to this toggle button. It says Maximize Viewport Toggle. Click on that. That will give you a full screen. Then you'll see over here on the right, you, you'll remember this menu from when we were working with standard primitives. You want to go one more over from this circle to the next one, next object over that says shapes. Click on that and you'll see it says splines. And here we have all kinds of different one dimensional, I mean two dimensional objects. And a lot of you used some of these for uh, past projects that we were doing. Uh, some of you used the lines. Remember you can uh, draw different lines, curve lines, straight lines, so forth. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. But what we want to do is we want to create a rectangle connected to another rectangle. So what we're going to do is just like you did when you were using the standard primitives. You're going to select rectangle, come over to the canvas to your work area, and press the left mouse button just like you did when you were doing the standard primitives. And you're going to draw that rectangle to the size you want it to be. Now when I let go of the left mouse button, unlike when you created the box, you'll notice it just stays there. It's not going to rise up and become three-dimensional. So now what I want to do is I want to be able to connect this rectangle to another rectangle. I want them to be one object. So I need the program to recognize that I'm creating one object. So what I want to do first is I want to select the rectangle I just created. I do that by clicking on the Move button, then I come down here and click on my rectangle so I make sure that it's selected. Then I'm going to click on the right mouse button. You'll notice it opens this submenu. The submenu, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, has an option that says Convert To. I'm going to select Convert To Editable Spline. Now what that does is that will let me create an object that's the same as that one, that it will recognize as being the same object, that they will be one object. So if you look over here to the right, just under the modifier list, you'll see now it says editable spline. So editable spline will give me several options. If I click to the left of it, I need to select it. Some of you may have an easier to notice checkbox. This one, you really would never know you need to check here unless somebody tells you. So I'm going to check to the left, and you'll notice it opens a submenu where I have some options. I have vertex, segment, spline. Now if I were to select vertex, this is kind of cool, do you see these points appear on all the corners of the object? I could now reshape this spline if I wanted to. If I wanted to kind of mutate it or, or create a different form for something I'm creating. See, it looks kind of like a flag. So I could do that using the vertex. I'm going to undo that. So Vertex will let you do a lot of cool things. And by the way, be sure as you're watching this video to pause any time to try something out. The beauty of YouTube is you can work along with me on this. And you can pause any time you get confused or need a minute to understand something. So we're going to click on Spline because we want to create a second object that is recognized as being one with this one. So now I'm going to come over to my original object. I'm going to copy it. Remember how to copy? I place my cursor right on the object I want to copy. I hold down my Shift button. I hold down my left 
mouse button, and now you see the z-axis, the blue arrow. I want to move straight up on that z-axis. And then once I get to a height I like, I'm going to go about that high right there, and I'm going to let go. And now I have a second object. Now how can I recognize that these are one object? Well, if you notice, do you see how there's these blue corners, and then there's the, the yellow corner? That's one way you know they're one object, because it's an exact copy that that's the start corner. If you were drawing this object, that's what the 3DS program sees as being your starting point. And if you notice, they're aligned. So that says this is the same object. So now we want to create lines connecting this. So there's a couple ways we could go about this. Now a lot of you may be thinking, well, let's just draw a line between them. OK, well, let's do that. So let's come over here and let's select line and uh, come over to splines, select line. So let's go over here to the bottom right rectangle on the right corner and let's just draw a line straight up. So I hold down my left mouse button, draw the line straight up to the top rectangle right corner. Now you notice lines are tricky things because when I let go of the left mouse button, that line is still attached to my cursor. Now it's just bending everywhere. So I'm going to go back to that point. I need to click a second time. But what happens when I click a second time? Now it created another point where I could keep going with the lines. See, I could just keep creating more points on it. So that's two clicks. But if I want to create a line that's just going to be one line with two points, a start and a finish point. I need to hold down the left mouse button, release it, click again, and then right click. And now you can see the line is there. It shows the z-axis. That's not part of the line. It's just the white part here. So it takes three mouse button moves. It takes holding down the left mouse button, clicking again, and then clicking the right button. Think of clicking the right button as you're cutting the string. The left button is adding a second point, a turning point. So you click once, you're moving the line. Click twice, you're creating a second point, like this. Hold down the point, click release it. That's once, it gives me a curving point. Click twice, it gives me a, a another starting point. But if I right click, then it cuts the string. So it takes three click moves to create a line. So there's my line. Looks great, right? Okay, but here's the problem. <laughs> That's not going the right direction, is it? It looked like it was, because remember, we're working in a three-dimensional uh, environment. That actually just went straight across on the plane. So what do we do? How do we solve this problem? We want that line to be going along the z-axis, not, not along the y-axis. So what we need to do is we need the line to recognize that I want it to go from this corner on this on the bottom rectangle to the top right corner on the top rectangle. So what we're going to do, we're going to select the bottom rectangle. We're going to go back to splines. We can see our selections here. We're going to select vertex. Vertex gives us those points. Remember where you can mutilate the shape if you want it to, but it gives you all the different points. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up here, and you see this three with kind of a squiggle, almost looks like a question mark or a horseshoe. This is the snap toggle. This is the snap tool. It will let you snap a line or objects to each other. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this, and then we're going to right mouse click it. Now when we right mouse click that, it opens this menu. We want to select, we want the snap settings to be on the vertex, on those points. So we're going to say vertex. So now we have that selected. So now over here on the right, under vertex, we have vertex selected under editable spline. We're going to scroll down to where we see geometry in the modification menu. You can see here we have choice linear, and we're going to say create line. Now, I'm going to select the point I want to start, 
hold the left mouse button down, go up to the, the point I want to stop, release the left mouse button, click it again, right mouse click, and there it is. Let's take a look. You see, this time it went the correct direction. So I can do that again on the next point, hold it down, release it. See, if I right mouse click, it's just going to disappear. So I have to click it that second time. So I have to hold left mouse button, click it again on the left mouse button, and then right mouse click. Now I have my second line. I'm going to create my third line. Hold the left mouse button down, click the left mouse button again, and right mouse click. And then the final line. Left mouse button down, let go of the left mouse, left mouse button, click it again, right mouse click, and there we go. So there we have an object, a rectangle connected on all the corners. And the beauty of that is if you want it to just have a line on one corner or three corners, that option will let you do that. Now, if you're wanting all the vertex points to connect, there's a quicker way to do this. So let's back up and let's start over. And I'm going to show you a quicker way to connect all the points. OK, so there, there's a quicker way to connect four lines to two shapes, to create a cage or a, or a, a cube or something of that nature. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to splines and we're going to select rectangle. We're going to draw a rectangle. I suppose that's good enough. We're going to right mouse click. We'll make sure it's selected. We're going to right mouse click, go down to convert to, convert to editable spline. Say that 10 times fast. Then we're going to select editable spline. I click on the click right next to editable spline opens my sub menu. I'm going to click on spline. And then I'm going to come out here and I'm going to copy this. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, my left mouse button key. I'm going to move straight up on the Z axis. Keep it nice and straight. There we go. So now I have the two objects. So now how can I draw the lines between these two? How can I do it quicker? Well, if you come over here to the modifier list and you scroll down until you see cross section. Right here, it says cross section. I'm going to select that. And you notice as soon as I selected that, all the points are connected. So that is a quicker way that you can connect the two objects. And see, it's three-dimensional. So play around with this. Try them both. Try doing it uh, one at a time. And try doing it where you're connecting all the objects together. Then when you complete that, here's a challenge for you. You can see there are two shapes here, and you will have access to these, those of you in my class. You will have access to these pictures in Google Classroom. You can see there is a picture of a wireframe bar stock and a wireframe Allen head bolt. I want you to go ahead and try to create those two objects. But before you do, collaborate with a partner and tell them talk to each other about how you think it would be best to go about creating those two objects. Have fun doing it, and good luck.